Hello lovelies, welcome to my channel. My name is Bryony. If you've never been here before, I do cruelty free and vegan makeup reviews and tutorials on this channel. And I also do deep dives into a whole bunch of different things, whether it's environmental or social or to do with companies or ingredients. Basically anything that's slightly related to beauty is probably going to be on here. I'm also a beauty editor at Vegan Magazine as well, and I'll have that linked for you down below too. So today you're actually here to talk about the attractiveness bias that we all suffer from, the halo effect, whatever you want to call it. There are so many studies out there on this. It covers such a broad range of topics that today there's this kind of like a light touch into an introduction into all of these things. I am happy to do deep dives on these ones as well. This is just sort of giving you like a TLDR, like a skim read, like when you're reading the abstract of a paper, that's basically what today is. So again, everything's going to be listed down below. I do recommend checking that out, but without further ado, let's put some makeup on and also dive straight into this. All of the products I'm going to be using are going to be listed down below, but you're not here for following the tutorial. You are here for this deep dive, so let's just get started. So this entire topic is really interested for me. Um, you voted for it on Instagram and uh, follow me on there if you're not already and also subscribe to this channel. I come up with new videos every week. You're always welcome here. Attractiveness bias, blinded by beauty, the halo effect, pretty power, I mean, whatever you want to call it, we kind of know it exists. All you need to do is look at like media, like Instagram, movies, TV shows, even when it comes down to our social media. So like who is big on social media? Normally they're pretty people and it's just like the way it's accepted to be. That's what we've been exposed to for years and it's kind of been proliferated throughout the centuries, especially since like print media came into force. Like it's really focused on pretty people, so to speak. What's the difference between something being cute and something being creepy? It depends on who is doing the action. If the person is attractive, it's cute. Oh my God, they love me. If it is done by someone that's not attractive, then it's creepy. So for example, cast your minds back to when Edward Cullen was like a heartthrob. Edward, Jacob, whichever one, they both did weird things. But really, if we had a situation where there was an old man, because that is actually what he is, was watching a teenager sleep, they would be reviled as a potential pedophile. However, he was instead put on lots of posters and merch and uh, deemed to be a heartthrob. If, however, he wasn't a pretty boy, then we would be facing a very different situation and people would be running and screaming and, you know, generally complaining about the fact that they're actually sexualizing this sort of thing and promoting it to young girls because it's very damaging. Same as just think about that guy at the bar, like you've got a bunch of girls there and then someone buys you a drink. If they're hot, oh my god, yes, this is like the best day ever. Oh my god, what if we get married? Oh my god, this is so amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. However, if they're not attractive, then you're faced with the, the very common situation of, ooh, what a creep. Like, he thinks he actually has a chance with me. Talk about punchy above your weight. And that sentiment alone was reason enough for me to actually want to make this video. There are actually multiple reasons, which is what we're going to dive into. However... There is definitely a disparity here. So you know how we have like the whole number scale 1 to 10 of hotness and that unwritten rule that you can only ever really be like within a two point scale of like your actual partner or potential partner. Yeah, that's really gross. It's literally putting a value on the way that people's genes work, the things that they've inherited from the past, the amount of money that they have, say if they can afford plastic surgery or go to the gym and have the money to be able to uh, wear all of this makeup, buy all these nice clothes to make themselves look better, to fit whichever beauty standard is considered to be the norm. It's just honestly so bad that it prevents people from actually believing that they've got opportunities because media and society are telling them they don't. Talk about a toxic environment. Let's just dive into this. Let me explain. Well, not me per se. Let's have a look at what the scientists have said because scientists, sociologists, they're trained in this stuff. I'm literally just someone that is using their things to make content for you. Of course, everything is going to be linked down below because if you don't cite your sources, what are you even Wikipedia? If you, like me, want to spend two weeks going down this fun rabbit hole, I do recommend it. It was a great, uh, thrilling time, especially as my poor husband had to listen to me saying about all of these wonderful and awful things that I was finding out. And uh, he's actually given me some first-hand experience of this, so 
makes me feel um, validated or it validates what the scientists found out at least. So first off, let's have a look at what attractiveness bias is. Also known as lookism, attractive people are generally perceived more positively than unattractive people. They receive more attention from the opposite sex, receive more affection from their mothers, or maybe not in case of jealousy, you know, receive more leniency from judges and juries, and receive more votes from the electorate than do unattractive people. All other variables being equal, attractive people are preferred in hiring decisions or make more money in doing the same work than unattractive people. The attractiveness bias is a function of both biological and environmental factors. Basically, pretty people have easier cards in life dealt to them. So looking into this a little bit further, let's have a look at getting jobs, hiring, firing and the money that you make. So getting a job should really be based on your credentials, your skills, your history, your education perhaps, also your personality, not necessarily anything to do with your looks or name. I mean, this is one of the reasons that I really want to have it to be standard that all CVs are not allowed to come with a picture. They need to be the same format and have no names on them. I want it to just be purely based on people's accolades and there could be no judgement based on race, sex, anything. It's just on your accolades. Same format, same thing, so then everyone that's actually judging them, there is no opportunity for creating um, racist, sexist, homophobic uh, sort of things, you know, and also lookism. So the Harvard Business Review wrote a really interesting piece about this and how AI could actually potentially assist us with ensuring that people were hired fairly. We already know the issues with names when it comes to CVs, I mean, racism does exist. They say, and I quote, Physically attractive individuals are more likely to be interviewed for jobs than hired, they are more likely to advance rapidly in their careers through frequent promotions, and they earn higher wages than unattractive people. Common manifestations of appearance-based discrimination may include bias against obese, oddly dressed, or tattooed candidates, or any people who don't fit a society's dominant aesthetic criteria. Scientific studies showing that less attractive individuals are more likely to get fired, even though they are also less likely to be hired. For example, in an experimental study, researchers sent 11,000 CVs to various job openings, including identical CVs accompanied by candidate photographs of different levels of attractiveness. Attractive women and men were much more likely to get a callback for an interview than unattractive or no photograph candidate. There is also a well-established association between attractiveness and long-term income. My goodness, here we go. With above average beauty translating to 10 to 15% higher salaries than below average beauty. In the US, this beauty premium is similar to the one found for race or gender. Noting that this effect is found even amongst highly successful individuals. For instance, attractiveness ratings of Fortune 500 executives predicted their company's profits. So basically, if you are an unattractive black woman, for example, then not only do you have the fact that you're female going against you, which earns you about 15% less, you're unattractive, therefore you actually get another 15% less, so that is 30% less, and then you have your race which works against you in this uh, racist society. So however much that percentage slaps off you, so you're running 30% lower rates than someone that is white and attractive. Like, that is horrific. Like, well, a white cis male, effectively. And we say that this is an even playing field? Like, honestly, this is just another reason why all salaries should be known and out there. For years, I always found it to be, like, such a thing, like, you can't talk about it. But actually, the way to actually smash through things and make things more equal is to talk about them. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's almost like, I don't know if people feel like they're not worth how much they make. If there could be jealousy. I mean, basically, it's just a form of control, right? From, like, the bosses. To be like, no, 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 no. No one talks about how much money they make. Because that's, like, a crass thing to do. Um, it's actually helpful. It's empowering. It actually empowers people to say, um, Sally over there is earning this much. Jimmy over there is earning that much. Why am I placed here earning this much? I deserve more because these are my credentials and I already know my outputs are higher than Sally's and of Jimmy's. Why am I just being discriminated against? Because that's really what it breaks down to is discrimination. So penalties for crimes. Now this one really scared me. So my husband actually has first hand witnessed this as well. When the same crime was committed, but depending on your attractiveness level, people got more or less in terms of a punishment. Now, sickening, I know. 
So we already know the racism issue and the toxicity that that brings, but it also accounts for your looks too. This study, again down below, really worried me to look at. Over 2,000 criminals were rated by police officers, mind you, on how attractive they were on a scale of 1 to 5. I'll put this chart on the screen now so you can see it. Dark blue is the least attractive, light blue is the most attractive. The fines increased the less pretty that you were. So again, it pays to be beautiful even in terms of committing the same crime. Now we're getting into a spicy topic. The mental health disparity. The crazy hot scale. Now, I used to love How I Met Your Mother. The popularization and acceptance of the crazy hot scale is a problem here. Again, clearly showing that even to be mentally ill, in order to get acceptance, love and support, you better be heckin' pretty, otherwise you're gonna get left behind. If you fall below that line, then there's not a chance for you. This was honestly so common like a decade ago that it was referenced by all of my friends when they were talking about dating and we referred to each other on that scale as well. It's, it's really disturbing to think that was just a decade ago, like it's awful. The other issue is glamorization of mental health in shows. It's not helped at all. So I used to love the show Skins, but Effie Stoneham has been the poster child for Tumblr girls and also people that are suffering from mental health, and I like to coin the term beautifully broken. Effie as a character was really, really troubled and actually desperately needed help, but the whole show was kind of revolved around how people wanted to screw her, and that is terrible. It's just because she was really beautiful, skinny, white, amazing bone structure. If she wasn't all of those things, then no one would actually care about her. She wouldn't even be one of the main plot characters. She was like the face of skins for the I definitely made a big boob So these people are idolized as opposed to being kind of poster children for people that need help and going through that journey together. It's the same way that anorexia is portrayed to be a really positive thing, almost really a normalized thing because Diet ads are so common, diet plans are so common, slim fast, all these other things. It's actually become glorified and normalized to the point that people are having to try and unlearn those damaging ways of thinking. I actually want to dive deeper into this issue, so do comment down below if you'd be keen for that too. Totally two different shades of yellow happening right now. Social media is pretty self-explanatory, right? The top content creators, what do they have in common? Normally they're attractive, even if it's just to the scale on the Greek perfect scale. Normally, the way it always has been, in order to get a brand deal as an influencer without a 24 inch waist or m massive muscles, as well as being white, um, good luck. <laughs> Before this year, you had a heckin' hard time. The problem is, most of this is actually all fake. Now, Photoshop was once reviled by all of us in adverts, and we all stood up against it. Remember when Dove was, like, breaking the boundaries by showing normal people and not photoshopping? And we're all like, yes, finally been asking for this. And now we're actually doing it all ourselves. Like, to me, this just feels like bull, seriously. I don't like it when people that others are meant to look up to fix their face, bodies, and hair and spend hours doing this as opposed to promoting the actual self-love they're telling their followers to. It's honestly just created people that look like plastic. And with social distancing, I swear that lots of people will not know what real people even look like anymore. Honestly, I just really want more studies to come out on the effects of this, like, long term, because there's just nothing that's really out there that's, like, reputable. Other than plastic surgeons saying that their sales have skyrocketed. Now, another one of the effects of the halo effect is you're more inclined to believe that these are good people if they're pretty. So, even when you look at fairy tales. Now, I am a die-hard Disney fan. It's got a lot of problems, but I still love it. But when is a villain ever really pretty? I mean, even with the queen from Snow White, you know, the evil one that wanted to kill her, she was actually revealed for her true ugliness when she started making those potions. And of course, the infamous apple, which is why I don't eat red apples, even now. So she was revealed to be ugly on the inside, therefore a bad person, and all the good heroic characters are typically beautiful. Even Quasimodo, when you look at him, he's not really necessarily drawn in the same way that he's described in the book. A lot of things are not described in the same way as in the book in that movie. There's, I mean, yep. The point here is that from a young age, we're exposed to the idea that beauty is good and ugly is bad, 
even before we properly realize what attractiveness really is. I'm pretty sure that children don't understand the Greek scales of beauty. Pretty people are viewed as more sociable, dominant, sexually warm, mentally healthy, intelligent, and socially skilled than unattractive people. By the time that cute kids have become cute adults, they actually have benefited from this bias for years, giving them a higher level of confidence, which kind of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy in terms of success as well. Which again is why we shouldn't keep telling children, oh you're so pretty, you're so cute. We should base compliments based on skills, on honing talents. That's how we should do things, like saying that kids are being creative as opposed to basing it on looks. So on that whole babies thing, um, you think that we're just taught this? It's actually, <laughs> it's genetic darling, it's in your blood. So there was this really interesting study that was done with babies where they actually used pretty pictures of cats as opposed to ugly pictures of cats. Now, I think that all of these kitty cats are cute. I'll put them on the screen now so that you can see, but what you'll actually see is the babies linger for longer looking at the pretty ones as opposed to the ugly ones. And they do the same with humans as well. I think that all of these cats look cute, but clearly the babies know something that I don't. There's also a really good article in this New Scientist magazine that I recommend you look at. Apparently, pretty faces take less work to process than unattractive ones. So there's that. So us looking at pretty people is kind of us being lazy. I don't really know what to make of that, but still. The attractiveness halo effect. Blinded by beauty, attractiveness bias and accurate perceptions of academic performance. So this was actually a paper that's been published again at down below. Their study found that attractiveness was linked to perceived conscientiousness, which also made people believe that they would perform better academically. So for this study, they actually ruled out including other ethnicities other than white people to prevent stereotypes. And they included only males and females of a small age range, so this would be more of a control. Only a hundred participants were used, including no men with beards. So basically, all white people that look the same effectively, yet still attractiveness bias presented. They raised at the end of this some key issues, including the small sample size, because scientists should and can be objective. Future research in face perception can benefit from noting the significant differences in perception accuracy based on those theories of intelligence or competence. Perhaps more importantly, given the well-documented evidence of expectations of academic performance on actual academic performance, our findings help emphasize the biased effects of perceived attractiveness on expectations of academic performance. While it seems unlikely that another person's attractiveness can be filtered out when attempting to accurately perceive academic performance, the mere knowledge of the negative influence attractiveness has on accuracy may encourage less bias practice. For perhaps the best antidote to deter unconscious bias is to make people consciously aware of the possibility of the bias. So basically, attractiveness bias and people believing that certain people will do well. Think about teachers, parents, employers, judges. This will actually become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Pretty people are expected to be more conscientious and better people overall, which significantly really advantages do not like them this because conscientious people are believed to work harder, therefore they will actually perform better in school at whatever tasks they're given. So us as people, what can we do? Well, for starters, if you're using social media, you can stop using Photoshop, filters, Facetune, everything else because this is obviously propagating the negative stereotypes that we need to fall prey to. I wish that more influencers actually did this because skin texture is a thing. People have flaws, no one is perfect because nobody looks like a doll. And I'm still convinced that by people actually seeing this, it brings down their own self-esteem and creates more dysmorphia for people because they're only exposed to the perfection that other people portray, including people that they look up to. The thing is that education is power and people being aware of issues is powerful. It means that you think twice and question what you know. There is no real way to be able to effectively combat this since it's literally in our genes. But if we didn't put pretty people on such a pedestal and instead focused on skills, impact, talent for people's worth, that could help shift things. You can say that we live in a really visual world and why would I want to look at an ugly person when I can look at a pretty one instead? Well. Your personality might be a bit ugly to start off with there, mate. But it also comes down to making conscious choices. Just like employers should, teachers should, parents should, judges should, 
we can all work as individuals to assess our mindset and motivations and views. Well, I did a few things off screen. If you're wondering how I actually did the freckles or anything else, um, this is actually an eyebrow product on my nose in case you're wondering. <laughs> and also do comment down below about attractiveness bias, anything that you've personally noticed because I know that me, when I wear makeup, when I put effort in as is seen by society, then I'm actually treated far better than when I go out just wearing sweatpants and I haven't washed my hair in three days and it's just like tied back. I get treated so much better. I get like the door open for me, people are generally nicer to me. Like, I'm a white person who has like the typically beautiful features of having like light hair and I've also got blue eyes and pale skin which doesn't make sense to me as like a classic sort of beauty thing but whatever. So if that's how I'm treated then how are other people being treated? It's just, these are from my own observations as well, like I know that when I was skinnier as well I was treated so much better even though I was actually battling with an eating disorder, I was treated wonderfully. I know that from the evidence that we've seen that we're actually this way from birth. There is also social conditioning that comes into it as well, right? Do comment down below, let me know, and also let me know what you'd like me to do a deep dive into next if you want me to do a deep dive into mental health and the portrayal of it in the media because I would love to do a deep dive into that. And there's also brands that I want to look into, in particular with L'Oreal with their more recent public scandal of the way that they've treated people of the black community. Um, so I'd be very keen to do that. I've just got so many different ideas. I would really appreciate your steer on this. And I hope that you love this, have a wonderful week. Take some me time, take some self care time. And uh, yeah, also read those studies, man. It's so interesting. Like, really, it's so interesting. I'll see you lovelies again very soon. Bye.